what you're listening to. We've got a great lineup of guests with us today. Andrew, thanks for coming on again. Thanks, Mike. Good to see you. See you Charles, thanks for coming on. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. And Sean, th thanks for coming in at such short notice. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So regular viewers know what we've been, we're going to do. We've all picked out five records we've been listening to in over the past over the past week. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about them, right? Uh, if you've got any questions, you can put them in the in the chat, and we'll try and answer anyone's questions down below. Uh, hopefully, we've got some friends watching tonight. So, should we do a quick cheers and then get started? Cheers. 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 Here we go. I'm not really sure what this is. I, I got it from upstate New York. It's mm. called Cap. It's called Capo Cola. Capo Cola. It, Capo Cola. It's made by Ray Capo. It's supposed to give you spiritual enlightenment. So what the heck? <laughs> Let's see how this pans out over the course of the next uh, hour. Uh, <laughs> if I start taking off my shirt and dressing myself in beads. <laughs> no, I, I have the power to. Get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> <Out> of <here. laughs> All right. So as I'm looking, let's do this clockwise as usual. But Andrew, do you mind going first today, mate? No, I don't mind at all. All right. So go Andrew, Charles, Sean, and then me. We'll show one each and keep going around until until we're done. Let's do it right now. Right? Beautiful. So beautiful. All right. You, Andrew, you had a great year end show. Yeah, you had a great year end show. The 2022 Thanks, recap with Brian from Drop Dead. Yeah. Yeah. And Shout out to Brian, by the way. Drop Dead. He might be watching. He's off to Europe soon with Drop Dead and Napalm, Napalm Death. So um, I, it prompted me to realize um, I screwed up and never got this record, which is Drop Dead 2020. Um, big mistake. <laughs> I screwed up big time by not buying this when it came out. Uh, I just recently did an order with Revelation. I bought all the Drop Dead records I didn't have. A couple. And... Um, this silver laminate one, it's a new pressing, I guess. Um, beautiful. And um, it sounds friggin' killer. Yeah. This is such a great record. I, I don't know why I slept on this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I messed up. <laughs> but this is like one of the best records, hardcore records out there that I've heard in years. Um, just the lyrics i mean it just yeah. re reading the lyrics along to you know listening to it just especially for americans you know it, it encompasses a lot of feelings right about the last three years they, they nailed it all <laughs> from politics you know what's going on with war you know what's going on with animal rights everything it's just all here and they did an amazing job on this record. And Armageddon, just the, the reissues they did recently with the, the silver laminate, the yeah. colors, awesome. Just real, I'm really happy with this record and um, really kicking myself for not getting it when it came out. I was kind of dumb for not doing that, but I was caught up in the whole rare vinyl scene. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you tend to forget the, uh, the mainstays and Drop yeah. Dead is the American mainstay for us. You know, big influence on me and, you know, I was in a band, and I don't think I would have been in the band if it wasn't Drop Dead. So there you go. That's a great record. I like it. They they kind of slowed it down a little bit. A little bit. Just and a little bit, right? Bob's vocals are a little different. Yeah, but that's right. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, You know, how many times could you do Unjustified Murder and, you know, at the cost of an animal? Is it, but they always reinvent themselves and, you know, they always find good production too. You know, they go to Kurt Ballou. They, they find a way to just like, and the, the current day commentary, even though this record came out a couple of years ago, it's so relevant now. Yeah. And that's important in a hardcore record, right? And punk records. So Absolutely. Um, I'm really happy I got it. <laughs> and uh, I'm probably going to seek out like maybe the original pressing too. So um, and and they get in for putting out like such quality stuff. It's good the, stuff. All, yeah. all the silver laminate reissues are beautiful, and yeah. they did a great job on it. It's and really cool to see all the stuff in print. You know, how many bands can can say that thirty years after they've started, people are still saying this stuff about them? You know, um, yeah. unbelievable. I mean, they they uh, their first show was opening for Rorschach and Born Against in Rhode Island. Really. And, like, Wow. 1992 or something 91 
and they were they were awesome. We we were like intimidated by Bob at the time because he was <laughs> on stage swinging around the mic stand, <laughs> and then we met him afterwards, and we were like, oh. <laughs> he's not he's not as intimidating guy. in real life, but they're still an awesome band. You know. No. Um, the magic you know, of the totally stage. Paul so says um, Paul, Paul, Bias, sorry, sorry. Paul Bias says, is the record a special color? That's his question. Um, yeah, it is. Oh, it's there orange there with some kind of smoke color. There you go. Orange smoky. There you go. I think. But the the lighting in here sucks. Sorry, guys. But um, I, I got at the same time, not to, not, not to go two for one here, but I got the demos record too. Me too. And I'd never heard the Drop Dead demos before. And it, it's ferocious. I mean, I, I thought it would like sound kind of crappy. I was like, oh, it's demos. It's probably going to sound, you know, it, it did it. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> you know, so. That's funny. I got yeah. both of those at the same time as well. Yeah. Both moral of the story, do not count out Drop Dead. <laughs> right. So there you go. That's my first pick. There you go. Great. All right, Charles, what's your first pick of the day? So I got this record at a show recently, and it's like a tour edition. They didn't have real covers, and uh, they were like a straight edge band, lots of positive lyrics. Um, you may not have heard of them, but you may have. They're called Not Ready for Death. It's uh they're 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 really into life, you know. They really want to live life. The the one song is called "Ready for Life." Um, it's on real. No, I'm, I'm only kidding. That's just a stupid inside joke. Is uh, "Ready for Death" has been mentioned uh, three or four times on on yeah. this uh, on this podcast. These and, guys, uh, that goes that goes out to Artie Philly. Um, I am hesitant. I, I'll say this. I, I don't like to listen to music as a genre or uh, describe music as a genre, but much like black metal, I'm hesitant to listen to oi, oi music because I've been burned before and I've mm -hmm. liked oi music only to find out that, you know, they probably would want me and my family dead had they <laughs> had their choice. Um, so I, I have a friend that does a record pressing plan every once in a while. He'll send me a record. I think I'll. He thinks I'll like. And this was. This isn't new. It's probably a year or two old. But it's a double album called "Oi the Antidote." Um, it's on a record label called Crossbar Records. Uh, I don't know. There's something about Oi music that you can just put it on, listen to it, and turn it. I mean, I found found this on my record player for like three weeks straight. Um, and I got to give credit, there's 21 bands from probably 12 different countries. Uh, beautiful gatefold package. Wow. You know, really did a great job with it. Uh, I would tell you what bands I like the, the best, but I really didn't pay attention and I wasn't matching the uh, track matching, but I didn't hate anything on it. I thought everything on this is really good. Um, and none of the bands on here, nope, I haven't heard of a single one of them outside of this record. So I love records like that because those yeah. are the compilations that I grew up with that I would then go and try to find <laughs> records by those bands. So uh, I don't know. If you see it somewhere, I would definitely check it out. Uh, sure. if, if I'm in fact wrong and I do get burned by one of the bands on this record, <laughs> let me know and I'll throw it in a fire. Um, so but it's until then, I will listen to it and enjoy it. <laughs> it's all contemporary bands, right? Yes. Um, Hard Evidence, Abravnik, Squelette, Weekend Kids, Kong Kong. There's some of the bands on here. Mess, No Class, Rise Up, Sharp Shock. Uh, Mess, have been, Mess have been talked about on this show. They have a split single with The Chisel. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I'll show you their picture, but I can't find it. They're here somewhere. All, all the bands have uh, pretty cool pictures. So, yeah, that's my first pick, Black Vinyl. Maybe maybe it comes in other colors, but a surprising, a surprising uh, for me it was surprising because 
like I said, I'm I'm hesitant to listen to oi bands because I've been burned before. No. I always have. But I haven't been. I read what I could of the lyrics, and I don't think I've been burned this time. No. Looks cool. French oi is really blowing up recently. A lot of good French bands, especially that band Syndrome eighty one was a big favorite. The, the French off. bands on here are there's one called Bromure mm. and Squelette. Right. And that's it. All Australia, Sweden, Italy, Mexico, Spain, Canada. So yeah, Netherlands, they go all over the world. And it took a lot probably took a lot of effort to do. So I respect that. Yeah. So great. That's a new one to me. Nice. Who who put that out? Charles, do you know what label put out? Crossbar Records. Crossbar Records. All right. Yep. All right, Sean, what you, what you got for us? Man? A lot of respect to you, Charles. I'm not sure I would pick that up, walking by it in the store. But it's nice to know people still have fun with us. It was sent to me for free, so I can't take the credit. Hey, there we go. <laughs> but thanks for the, the thanks for the, the props. So Andrew, Andrew says, hey, let's join this uh, podcast, Sean, and uh, talk about stuff you're super excited about. And that sort of set a chill up my spine because uh, I, I'm in a little bit of a lull to um, buying some new stuff. But I do have a Christmas pile over right over here that I picked up. But I haven't really had a chance to distill it down. But one in particular, I'll start with, um, you know, um, I like to keep up with the, the, the music that the family's sort of listening to. Um, the, the kids are getting a little bit older. They're teenagers now. Um, if I can sort of stay in touch with some of the stuff that they're doing, um, you know, it, it sort of improves our relationship a little bit because we can talk about music. So I'm not going to talk to them about the teen idols because they're like, OK, uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know what that is. Anyways, so um, my son, Jake, picked up the Deftones. So this is Deftones Ohm. I don't know if you guys know this one or not. Um, it's, it's more like modern, it's like modern, like sort of like rock kind of metal sort of a stuff. I don't know when this thing came out. I think probably like 15 years ago or something like that. That's a newer one. That's the newest. Isn't that the newest album? It's like two years old, maybe. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. It's anyway, a good one. So I, yeah. So I got this thing and gave it a spin and, and, and I have to say it took about three spins to sort of get kind of what they were doing. Like it kind of reminded me of like a Y2K POD out of San Diego or that sort of a, that sort of a thing. I mean, it's got incredible production. So obviously coming from a, pack, a punk background with extremely limited resources, you know, people are putting together whatever kind of recording you, you can come up with as soon as it sounds good enough you know, off to production it goes. And so it's sort of interesting for me still to buy records that have you know, a million dollar production in it and sit and appreciate um, how well the whole thing was actually made because it, it's impressive. It makes me wonder like, what if old punk bands had a production, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, the finances to do something on this level? I mean, it might've changed a lot of the records for good and some for the bad, I mean, um, arguably, but it, it's really good. It's, to me, it's sort of like the kind of music I would listen to if I was driving a car and like on a long trip. Um, most of the songs sort of have the same sort of heavy, full, kind of slow. It has a real moody sound about it. Um, you might want to check it out. One of the songs I enjoyed the most off the record was a song called Error, um, which had some really uh, nice tones to it. What I do like about it, um, I mentioned Metallica earlier, and you know, a lot, a lot, you know, once um, Cliff is out of the band, like the bass sort of disappears. But this kind of a, of a record, the way they did it, uh, the bass is still sort of forward. I really like bands and recordings where you can, there's a bass happening and there's doing, they're doing lines and fills and they're not just following the chords. So there's, there's actually some musicianship to the bass that's going on there. So I really appreciated uh, that about this record. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's the first record I got of them. Maybe I'll get more, maybe I won't, but I can certainly talk about it. Um, you know, what's cool about them is like they, they have like a shoegaze element. A lot, a lot of their stuff, like they, they mix it in, like they, they sneak it in there, which is like some of us old heads, you know, we, we recognize that. So yeah, that's the appeal. And you're right. Uh, the production is really good. But White Pony is one of their best records. If you want to that's, that why I was, that's why I was waiting to say. <laughs> yes. Like, <It's> a, <laughs> yeah. So I guess like the thing with that band, they all kind of just lumped in with that whole movement at the time. Yeah. But they, yeah. they don't, they're 
so yeah, much different to all that stuff. They have got that yeah. shoegaze element, a little bit of yeah. smashing pumpkins kind of thing in there. But that White yeah. Pony, if you like that record, White that's, Pony is amazing. That's, that's their yeah. Own. yeah. Yeah, they didn't have that one. I wanted to. Buy, I'd like to support the local brick and mortars, and they didn't mm -hmm. have that one. So this was the one that that was in the right. in the bin. So I I pulled that out. But um, it's kind of cool. Like we're um, we're making records now here at the house, and uh, our next release is a, by a band called Downer, and they actually play with the Deftones. I have a couple of flyers that we're going to collage into the release, and so I was like, oh, okay, cool. So these guys uh, these guys were playing in Southern California. It was kind of cool to see. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, you're you're locked up, so I'm watching it on my phone. So All right, could... that that's a good record to bring up, just because like that Deftones White Pony is a record that I listen to a lot, especially yeah. like late at night. It's perfect. I, I used to sit on planes. I used to travel off of work, and that's like a headphone record I would put on, like on a plane. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But before I, before I forget, I want to do something that might be a little bit painful for all of us to watch, just as, a, as an experiment. So this is the hype sticker, and this is a shrink wrap, you guys, right? Here we go. Get that out of here. <laughs> I need to do more of that. No, I, I hype do sticker, that. No, shrink, no hype sticker, no shrink wrap. Forget it. Get rid of it now. We weren't, supposed to, <laughs> we weren't supposed to keep it. It's just a selling point. That's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to go in a little bit of a, bit of a different direction. I'm going to start off with a bit of a short, sharp shock. But before I show it, I kind of have a question for you guys. Um, okay, so if, if there was like a band in your town or city that was kind of based around like a craft beer brewery, like what kind of a band would it be musically? Or probably would, you know, it would probably be like stoner rock or kind of like real Fresh. Fresh. Fr right right <laughs> I, I, I mean like okay so i'm going to show this record it's a band called thirsty they're from tokyo this is their oh. new ep or well, their first ep came out last year it's called uh beer core stomp but the thing about this band is it's all based around like this craft beer brewery in tokyo which my friend randy he's like the main brewer and um, they did a couple of beers with barney from napalm death so they brewed these beers together were they good yeah they were great yeah and they kind of they brew them and they sell them they give all the profits to various like, charities in the, awesome. in the in japan but uh, and what do they sell like well they kind of my, my friends randy said that they're kind of like east coast hardcore Bass, okay. but it's like randy's originally from buffalo he plays the bass and there's like three japanese oh. friends in the band they oh, say they're influenced by poison idea and agnostic front but for me when i listen to this it really reminds me like of an old japanese band that will be like on a compilation album like maybe in the flexi disc format if you think back to all those like compilations that came out in the 90s and 80s with like tons of japanese hardcore bands on really I hate to use the word, the phrase meat and potatoes, because it always sounds like an insult, but it's just straightforward, no metal, East Coast style hardcore, but made by like Japanese people. So it kind of sounds like a, a band that would be on a kind of Japanese compilation from like 1992 list. or something. Uh, yeah. And they have a band camp. If you want to go on the band camp, you can check it out. Thirsty. Beer Core Stomp. They have the record for sale too. Yeah, just straight ahead, hardcore. No fruit. I don't write them down. I wait until you do the recap. But they, <laughs> but I just copy <laughs> it's okay. And like the track listing is all like a, a craft beer menu. So you got the uh, lager, the ESB, the Irish Red, uh, the Pale Ale, the West Coast IPA, and the Stout. It's like the track listing on the back. I got a winter IPA right here. There you go. So yeah, I just got this a few days ago. Played it a couple of times last night. Just straightforward hardcore. Sounds cool. Yeah, check it out. Go on Bandcamp. You can listen to it. Thirsty. Beer course. Thirsty. There you go. That's my first pick. Nice. All right. Andrew, what's your second choice, man? 
So I was in a record store over the holidays and called Double Decker. Charles probably knows it, you know, East Coast, Pennsylvania record store. Great, great people that run it. Shout out to Jamie and uh, Chris that work there. Um, I picked, I bought this solely on the cover, Guitar Pete, Axitech. <laughs> um, I have it. Dead Soldier's Revenge. Yeah. Um, and I realized he's from Long Island, Guitar Pete. And it's kind of like if Motorhead was a little more metalish, and they were from Long Island and Queens and stuff. That it's kind of like what, what they're coming from. I mean, this is what they look, what he looks like. It's, you know, it's really like got that Motorhead type, verging on hair metal sound a little bit, right? And ten yeah. dollar, you know, cheap, you know, cheap stuff. But I, I bought it on the cover. I said, you know, guitar stuff. I love, I love anything guitar related. So I, I'm really happy. I've listened to it like five times already. So. Classy um, touch with the like the World War One Kaiser helmet there. Yeah, Dead Soldier <laughs> and it's all awesome. and I don't know how they got signed to a British label. They're they're on heavy metal records, right? Heavy I thought records. they were a British band when they I bought are. it because it's on heavy metal, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's on yeah. Heavy Metal America, which is from Wolverhampton, England, right? And how did the band from Long Island and Queens get to get get on the radar of heavy metal records, right? But it's it's a great record. It's uh, you know, not probably and not it, that hard to find. And uh, a very interesting fact about this record too <laughs> is C.J. Ramon played was on was in the band. Was he really? Uh, yeah, uh, C.J. Ramon, who from the Ramones, was wow. originally in the band. He's from Queens. So, um, guitar, Pete's Axe Attack. That's that's it. That's, that's and uh, songs like uh, Won't Ease Up, Dead Soldiers Revenge. Shattered Paradise, Satan's Twister, Ball Breaker, <laughs> some uh, you know funny lyrics, but it's uh, Andrew. They do they have? Do you have any indication that they played shows around there? Yeah, they played shows. They definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, I was talking to Ron about it. Um, they played shows, but inside the record with these promo photos. Too. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> Beautiful. Oh my god! They're not promo yeah. photos. They're headshots. Yeah, headshots, headshots, right? Yeah. So I just, uh, I love finding shit like this in the records, right? Cheap, That's incredible. Cheap records. And uh, on the back, it says who the photographer was, and it's Massapequa, New York, which is a couple of towns over from where I live. So they're locals, you know. They're, these are local people. So I just think it's cool. I never knew about them, never knew anything about them. They're, it's a band that was like under my nose, you know. And you think apparently, you Ron, think he missed Ron practice that night? Play, so. You think but he missed practice? Night? Do you think he missed practice that night because he had to get his headshots? Probably. <laughs> but I can't, uh, I know, can't make it. I got I got an eight o'clock. I got an eight o'clock for my headshots. It's a cool cover though. Cover. Yeah, I, I just bought it on the band name and the cover and heavy metal records. Can't can't go wrong, right? Do you remember? Do you remember what it sounds like, Mike? Or do you? Th I, I, I thought that was a bit about like it's like very like DIY metal a little, little bit of new over british heavy metal in there a little bit yeah a little he, bit of thrash great. but not quite thrash you know yeah he's like a really good guitar player so yeah. it's kind of like you know he's taking that motorhead thing to like the next level like yeah. they're kind of elevating it you know not just straight up rock and roll you know it's it's kind of making it more metal tinged but you know you i got a kick out of it i i i found myself listening to it more than i thought i would i thought i would just buy it and uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have bought this or stuff like that, but I, I, I actually enjoyed it. So there you go. And and finding out the facts after of, you know, where they're from and CJ Ramon was in it. So yeah. pretty cool. Finding those photos are, are priceless. That that was hilarious to me. I, I And I didn't find the photos till I listened to it a couple, like the third time I listened to it because I just, I usually keep my records set, you know, the sleeve, you know, separated from, I keep the sleeve, you know, yeah. and, the plastic whatever and, and i don't really look at the inserts a lot so i i dug in there I'm like wow i wonder if there's an insert and i, I found the photos like this is hilarious so <laughs> gonna frame those yeah, on, no, i don't think so but <laughs> i'm keeping the record though <laughs> i liked it so it'd be great if it was signed on the back and it had like a little heart and it said call me <laughs> <laughs> chicks only <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, I like that record. That's a good one. That's a good one. Cool. All it's, right. It's definitely a you know what are you listening to now record. Yeah, right? yeah, that's the kind of thing that we like. <laughs> All 
All right, Charles, what's your second choice? So I don't, most of the records I acquire nowadays are from yard sales or estate sales, thrift stores. I, I tend to lean toward the cheaper, like Andrew just said, dollar record, $2 record. Um, so I was at a thrift store. I, I sometimes go to the thrift store at lunch by my work and I was carrying around some records and they were like, I know just enough about classical records to be dangerous. And I picked up some classical records that I thought were going to be worth some money because I do resell records. And as walking through the store, a guy walked up to me and said, are you buying those records? And I said, yeah. And he said, I brought those here and I have hundreds more at my house. Would you just want to come pick them up? Oh, I don't yeah. feel like bringing them here anymore. There you <laughs> go. It's like, where do you live? And, you know, so wow. I ended up going to his house and picked up a couple hundred classical records. But um, one of them caught my eye. It was a guy I've heard of before. And as a bass player, um, I, it was interesting to me because uh, the record is called uh, Bass Virtuoso. And uh, he actually plays a double bass. So oh. as as far as I'm concerned, what's better than bass? Double bass. Double bass. Um, but double bass is actually, as you can see, it's a uh, it's kind of like a cello, and you play it with a bow. Um, yeah. And uh, I put it. I, I it piqued my interest enough to start listening to it. I wanted to hear it, and it's you know stayed on my record player for a solid week, um, constantly turning it over. It was uh, just dissonant enough. It wasn't like classical music that you'd think of like Mozart or Beethoven or it mm -hmm. it, it has a, a sound to it that just kept you interesting kept it interesting kept you interested and kind of like uh just a little bit different um he, there were three other records by him in the collection that I got so I've been listening wow. to them too but I like this one the best because there's one of them has guitar and uh one of the one of the uh, pieces has guitar which is really interesting. And uh, it's on the Golden Crest record labels, which I have some weird fascination with because it's from Long Island and uh, Huntington Station to be exact. And um, they put out Whalers records and other garage rock in the, in the 60s. So I've always kind of gravitated toward the label as something I wanted to pick up. But if you ever see, or I don't expect you to, find this in a store because it's probably not that available but i'm sure his stuff is available in uh, uh digital formats um it's pretty pretty cool background music to play wow. while you're uh is that just while like you're doing double, other bass, stuff. double bass guitar drums um not drums there's piano piano um guitar um and double bass and it's just wow the sound he gets out of it is pretty amazing um, one That's of the other records I got, which I was listening to, was a uh, his version of like some Christmas classics. So for the holidays, I would listen to it, and it, it's almost like disturbing, eerie versions of Christmas classics, where you're like a little, uh, kind of just a little off put by them. So I thought that was interesting. So um, it's the early '60s. This is, I believe, mid '60s, but. One of the other records, I, it's actually on a Japan, the digital analog version, Japanese label. Mm. Uh, that was probably mid-70s, late 70s. Um, I, I believe the, the one I was showing was probably mid to late 60s. Um, so, yeah, he, he's been around for a while. I like that um, stuff. I picked I don't up know a if whole he's... bunch of time. And I got, uh, there was this one record, and it was all percussion. And it's, it's basically just one guy doing drums, cymbals, any kind of percussion, something you could hit or strike. And it was just like the coolest record to listen to. Just, just they don't yeah, make this, stuff like that anymore. This label, uh, Golden Crest, did a series of albums called the Clinician Series. And they took like virtuosos of all these instruments. And Gary, they did a Gary Carr one, but they also, can't remember, they did a drum one. And it's basically like a record of them teaching you how to play and like different kinds of uh, cool. versions of fills and, and uh, the drum one was, was pretty awesome. So I, yeah, I like stuff like that. Nice. I'm getting stuff that we've never seen before. Right. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. And, and so you, you can hit the jackpot with some of the classical records. There's some real sought after stuff sometimes. 
people always dismiss the genre, but you can find some stuff that's. Yeah, you know, there's, I mean, Stockhausen records are on classical labels. There's all sorts of stuff that are, yeah. that's really cool uh, that you would just kind of flip past in a, in a bin. I always flip um, past if, you're, I, if you have, if you have a kind of a, a mild knowledge of what, what to look for, you can grab some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, the gram the gramophone stuff is really nice. The German made gramophone stuff. I have yes. a ton of that. Yeah. Yeah. I always pick that stuff. I can find uh, big handfuls of it at the local Goodwill thrift. Those are ninety nine. Everybody cents. everybody's looking for rock. Everybody wants rock. Nobody yeah. even bothers with with uh with yeah. anything but rock. So that's all stuff that's left behind. One time I was walking out a huge handful of classical out of Goodwill and all of a sudden a bunch of people were like like yeah, I mean it had huge handfuls like what are you doing with all what why are you why are you buying all this for like this is amazing stuff and a bunch of people i don't even know if they have turntables they ran back to see you know what was back there just because i had <laughs> some interest in it and i yeah. pulled a record up once um it was a live performance like in 1940 and i looked it up on on discogs and it was like a 300 dollars record just yeah if it's not if it's not mainstream most of your most of the uh, people at thrift stores are not are not going to be interested yeah. in it. So right. I, I'm glad to pick up those scraps. They're looking for first press Beatles, Beatles records. Never going to find them. Right. Or Billy Squire, The Stroke. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Kiss Destroyer <laughs> with, with a moldy gatefold. Yes. Yep. All right. Thanks, Charles. That's a good pick. Okay, no sure. What's your second, second choice? All right. So I'm guilty of being an overzealous hardcore kid growing up and buying records. And I don't know if I'm in the same company as, as that, but um, I used to exclusively buy like basically punk and hardcore. That was it. I mean, mm -hmm. I was like religiously punk and hardcore. I completely closed my mind to other genres and other styles of music. And so it, it, it was a curse and also a blessing. The curse side of it is my collection is, is very uh, thin on these kind on other kinds of records. Uh, the blessing is, is like, it's almost like, it's almost like it's coming out new to me. It's like brand new music to me. It's not old to me. I'm not, okay, whatever. Maybe I'll spin that once every five years. It's like, it's stuff that I'm starting to pursue and stuff that when I get it, it's like, I'm like really amazed, but also kind of sad I missed it. Anyways, a lot of the stuff that I missed that um, I'm chasing after right now is stuff. Um, a lot of it's UK stuff, but it's um, in the category of like uh, post-punk or dark wave um, I started collecting some of the old Cure stuff. Like, I really love the pornography LP. I mean, it's just, it absolutely kills. But anyway, I'm sorry, I'm taking off this cover so it won't shine so much. This is uh, Sad Lovers and Giants. I don't know if you can see that. Mm. This is 1982. And I, I, I normally don't like... Uh, like I don't have Spotify, but normally like if I listen to like YouTube because I'm in the other room and I'm, I'm working, I just want music. And I was putting on Southern Death Cult. I was listening to Southern Death Cult. I was listening to like, uh, you know, whatever, like I put in like 1982 Cure Live, whatever. And all of a sudden this thing came up. Mm. Oh, you can see it. And um, absolutely amazed at it. It's really clean sounding, like it, it's got a lot of chorus in the guitars and the vocals are modulated through song after song. It all has various style to it, but it has that nice sort of dark wave kind of moody groove to it. And um, I just, I absolutely loved it. And of course, you know, I, I call my brother on the phone, like, cause he, he was totally, he totally understood like this side of music back when we were growing up. And I said, hey, do you know this band? He's like, oh, absolutely. You know, so. <laughs> Not a shock, but um, this is a repress is on, radi on Radiation Records, but I know that oh, okay. um, the originals are really, really hard. They're really, really hard to find. Hard I don't think hard. they press much. I think they were on, um, is it Cherry Records? Cherry Red? Cherry Red. Cherry Red, yeah. That's where like the originals came out, and they have a couple of EPs that are really cool, but... Um, uh, colorless dream. I mean, some of these songs I could just hear them on a loop for days and, and never get bored with them. And like, um, like Charles, it's like this one for a couple of days was on constant rotation, just flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. And when I've listened to it about four or five times and I'm still not bored with it, I know that this record is going to stay in my collection forever. I'll never sell this record. Mm -hmm. 
you know, someone will inherit this record or the house will burn down or whatever the case may be, but I won't sell it. I think it's a really fantastic record. And uh, I'd encourage people to take, take a peek at it. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not going to um, bring your um, heart rate up, but it's certainly cool. I'm exactly the same as you, Sean. Back in the 80s, it was just hardcore punk or metal, and I would like poo poo any like post punk or gothic, man, student music, art student music. Nah, don't worry yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. Like about 10, 15 years ago, I started to discover all that stuff, like especially bands like The Sound. Right. I found The Sound right, right, really right. opened a lot. Of... Same thing. Yes. Very similar to Sound. Okay. Okay. That really opened the door for me. I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm in with this kind of music, and uh, that that was the one for me. Was the sound. I got yeah, I, I got that sound yeah. by the same by the same thing. I just found it. It just showed up in the in the feed, and I, I bought that record immediately. The one with the lion on the front. That's I the second the album. Yeah, they're all good though. All the records are good. And yeah, yeah. talented musicians. Yeah, you can tell. You know, you'd almost want them to like do something a little bit more upbeat, but it's like this is genius. You know, I actually just, did like a. I did like a whole episode where I kind of like talked about the sound and like, cause they were on the, you know, they were on the same label as Echo and the Bunnyman. Yeah. And, you know, and they never really got big, whatever that means. You know, sure, sure, sure. And, and I think Adrian Borland, you know, the main songwriter was very frustrated. He was writing all these amazing songs, not getting it, not really getting the attention that he thought, thought he should get back, back then. And uh, yeah. 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 Great. So great record. There we go. Okay, I'm hesitant, kind of hesitated to show this one, and the reason is because I just literally got it last night, and I've only listened to it twice. But I'm really excited about this record, and we're going back to that thing of the dollar. I, it was in a hundred yen bin, which is a dollar bin, in a local record store, and I bought five records from that dollar bin. They're all they all kind of look like power pop records, but this one in particular looked. A little bit more harder edged and i was like it's only a buck a dollar 100 yen I'll, I'll pick it up and man it was like way better than i even expected it to be i was kind of expecting some sort of like just normal middle of the road kind of power pop new wave of like from the early 80s we're talking about this band called los los illegals the record's called internal exile and as I said, I've only listened to it like two or three times last night, so I had to do a bit of research about it. But it was on AM Records. It's their first record, first album. They went straight to AM Records. Um, it was produced by Mick Ronson. And like he plays guitar on a few songs. And yeah, I mean, apparently they are part of like the LA, the East LA Chicano punk rock scene, which is like the Brat and the Plugs and Lost Microwaves and all those kind of bands. They just did one record. There's keyboards on it, so it sounds they've got there's a little bit of that Devo thing going on as well. Man, this is amazing. It's like it's not a new wave record. It's not a, a uh, you know like a power pop record. This is a punk punk record. What's the what's the age on that one? 1983 came out. Hmm. Yeah, which is surprising for me. I thought it was just going to be kind of more power poppy. There is a little bit of that there in there. But they've got like some kind of like Latin percussion in some songs. There's a couple of slower songs, more mellow songs, but it's a pretty hard hitting record. And it says on the back, we dedicate this album to the undocumented worker, the, the political refugee and the victims of socio-economic and religious oppression. Um, that's on a major label in 1983. Uh, Oh, interesting. What's the label? Okay. Well, it's on AM, which is you know, the major label. That is a major label. Yeah. And I people were sort of saying as I was reading up and reading up on, on them a little bit, it was like, well, they should have been on Posh Boy or something like that. Not a major. They would have known right. what to do with them because they got dropped and kind of disappeared. Of course, Paul Bayer's in the comments knowing this record, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's amazing. I was like, it was way better than I was ever expecting it to be. And apparently, cool. this is another thing I found. They they opened a club in LA called the Club Vex, and like Bad Religion, they put on Bad Religion in LA and stuff back in the in the early to mid eighties. And a band called the Undertakers, which is another old LA band that had a reissue recently that was was talked about on this show. But yeah, great record, like early East LA Chicano punk. 
on a major label. And then they disappeared. And that was it. Well, I never heard of them. I'm kind of surprised. I had never heard of them either. And I just, I mean, you know, you've got song titles like Secret Society, um, The Maze, you know, Se Search and Seizure, Not Another Homicide. Hmm. This is not your typical power pop or new wave. This is a punk, punk, punk record. Almost seems like a record would come out on Geffen, some kind of an LA-based label. Yeah, I, I don't know why, how, you know, how they got picked up by AM. I have no idea, but hmm. there you go. There maybe go. in the in the uh, in the um, after, well, maybe before, like the Los Lobos thing. Maybe that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. But like I read that they kind of they broke up and then they came back and they. You know, I don't know this band, Concrete Blonde. Do you guys know that band? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They did a record together with Concrete Blonde in like in the mid nineties. That was the only oh. other thing they did. Pop rock. Okay. Commercial, commercial pop rock. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Anyway, great record. Check it out. Lost. I think Concrete Lost. Blonde ended up on MTV a lot. I think. Oh really? Like a, okay. Uh, okay. A bit, a bit regrettable. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what's your third pick, man? Okay. So um, when Sean got announced to, to be the replacement for Ron, um, I was thinking, should I? I got announced or I got recruited? <laughs> I recruited. <laughs> I recruited. I recruited. Uh, I begged you, uh, but thank you for coming. No, uh, I was like, maybe I should switch this out, but uh, I don't want to seem like I'm kissing his butt, but this record he put out. Um, sorry. Uh, Mike Main Street's Bastard Collective Split. I mean – Dude, you knocked it out of the park with this record. I mean, thank you. Thank you. I, I never heard uh, Mike Mean Streets or Bastard Collective. I know it's your brother playing drums. Yeah. I know him from Man is the Bastard and all the other bands you guys have been in. Mm -hmm. I take a chance, you know, ordered it from you. And um, this has not left my turntable since I got it. Um, nice. A prog masterpiece, kind of, uh, you know, prog, the modern. Prog. Modern prog hardcore masterpiece in, in a lot of ways. It's wow. it's got a lot of twists and turns on both sides of the record. Uh, Mike Bean Street, I, never of, I never heard of Mike Bean Streets before, but mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder what this is going to be. But it's really like spaced out um, tape loops, um, a lot of different textures. And it's got that underlying like man is the bastard feel to it. On the Mike Mean Street side, not so, not fully, but a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Bastard Collective, however, if you're looking for that old school Manus the Bastard sound, wow. yeah, uh, I mean, you got the drummer from Manus the Bastard, right? Charred remains, PHC, Pillsbury Hardcore, all that, and the double bass. bass. Player, who this who this guy is? He's fantastic. Um, what's what's the guy's name? The plays bass. Austin. Oh uh, yeah, he's Austin. amazing. Amazing. So it's like kind of like taking Eric Wood and Kenyon and mix it together, <laughs> you know, and just a lot of like peaks and valleys on the Bastard Collective side. Um, and, you know, for those that don't know, Sean runs a label with his wife, Black Claw Records. I mean, they knock it out of the park with this stuff. Um, you get like a full color booklet. Um, so much so much stuff in here um, yeah we'd like to put a lot put, of stuff in there they always put posters um they always put stickers in every record they put wow. out so you're you're the kind of label that you know i'm not tooting your own horn here but you're the kind of label that it, you're establishing yourself where whatever you put out you buy because you know it's quality and you know it's going to be like okay I, I didn't go wrong getting this you know it's Top notch. The the way I I used to like to do it. I used to like to do top notch records with good production. Nice Charles too. Same thing. He had that philosophy. You know, great layouts, great extras, mm. all of that. Yeah. Um, that's really what you need to do as a label these days to stand out from everybody else because everybody's doing their records. GZ Media. You know, it's just yeah. typical splatter vinyl and. Yeah. you know, minimal insert and it sounds like mm. shit or, you know, it just, it's not, there's no heart in it. You know, it's just, it's just like, one of these, like, I'm not bagging on the labels that do that, but it just, it's, it's I'd an rather, important, yeah. I'd rather support stuff that like really has 
some soul to it. Uh, and the music has that too, uh, you know, on this record. So I'm way into it. I, I never, I wasn't expecting much. I, di I didn't know what to expect, really. Uh, I just, I figured Bastard Collector would be in, in that vein, you know, based on who's in it. Um, I know it's your, your uh, it's Joel from Man is the Bastard, Austin, you said. And there's yeah. a couple other dudes in it. Nelson, uh, Barnes. Barnes, yeah. Henry Barnes, Barnes is in it. Henry Barnes. And I mean, Sandor. yeah. It really like shines. It's one of those records that, you know, just pick it up, man. Blackwall Records. You know, yeah, you, you, I was going uh, to switch it out when you were coming on. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that because. No, I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. I am actually listening to it a lot. So there you awesome. go. I appreciate that, uh, Andrew, and, and I do. I'll make a quick point, um, not to belabor it, but it, there's something about the lost art. Well, I am using "lost" a little bit loosely here. Um, when we came out of the '80s, well, when we came out of the '70s, you know, I'm, I, you know, sitting down on the ground, looking at a gatefold record, looking at all the pictures, pulling out all the stuff, turntable. It, it's an experience. You know, you're, you're getting intimate. You're, you're learning. You're studying. You're, you're savoring this music, and then. Off we go into the 90s. People start, you know, little iPod, like MP3s, all the stuff that, you know, the CDs came on the scene and just overtook things. We lost some of the tangibility of it. But also, like, from a collector standpoint, wanting to have something that, that stays with you, you want to be able to produce something that's really quality, but it also is interesting. You learn from it, and it and, it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good keepsake to have. It's not just... Uh, a, a musical. I mean, of course, it's about the music, but there's something else about it. There's something about the art too. There's something about the the production that is important to um, the the total art of of what the bands are are trying to achieve. And if anybody's doing a record nowadays, they know it's no matter where you're doing it or what you're doing, it's not it's a not cheap at all. No. Um, to put out vinyl, and it's a total pain in the ass. <laughs> all, all the stuff you have to you have to deal with. So kudos to you guys for for Thank doing you. all that. I mean, it's I don't, I don't know how you do it, but yeah, that I'm one was too, so I'm excited. <laughs> so well, we went headfirst into it, and 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 that one was recorded like in in 2020, and it just took yeah, us so. forever oh, wow. to get in line at the pressing plant, and then you know, of course, with the delays and everything, and so it's we're very unreal, happy. Right? I'm dealing with it. I'm trying to put out another record with some, with another label. Um, and it's just the stuff you deal with, just pre just test pressings, the quality sucks. Like, mm -hmm. and you're trying to tell them I'm hearing surface noise here. I, you know, it's not good. And they're fighting with you about it. It's like, okay, I guess you don't want my money. That's fine. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's it's tricky. Hard, you know? You know, if you still want to keep doing it old school, st still go with the, the the lacquer cutting and doing the plating yeah. and, and the the two step and everything like that. Yeah. There's, there's no shortcuts. There's, there's no none. shortcuts. And and and, and I, I, I'm not, direct, not, direct I'm not say, I don't want to say anything negative about the 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 other styles of pressing, but um, you know, if, if you're going to get an entire record completed in a couple of months, yeah, I don't think you're going to get the quality you want. I mean, just look at the Discord box set, right? That that was a labor of love, right? That's that's exactly what that was. And they kept that their form. That was How designed to be a keepsake. That was designed to just that. be kept. <laughs> that was a home so run. Up your game, up your game. Not ready for death. <laughs> <Yes>. This <laughs> shitty photocopy is not not acceptable. <laughs> Cheer, cheers to you guys for doing it right, man. Thank you, Andrew. And, uh, great record. We got more in store. Yep. All right. Michael DeLorenzo seems to be enjoying this <laughs> record in the comments. He'll be on soon in February. That's, 10th, right. Right? That's the Bayville Devil. Uh, <laughs> the Hicks, now he's the Hicksville Devil. The Hicksville <laughs> Devil. Kill me. Kill you. Kill me. Kill we me. love Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we love Mike. Right. How could you not? All right, Charles, what's your next pick? What do you got? So, in uh, as an homage to to uh, you being in Japan and Ooh. my love for Japanese hardcore, mm. I actually picked this one for the music, but also for the packaging, which I've mm. always loved and mm. loved to, speaking on that subject. Love 
uh, the Japanese for their packaging is always top notch. Um, but I'm also looking for any other information about this band if you have any. Anyway. Oh, um, okay. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Kuro. Kuro. Fire. Yeah, I know. I have the ten inch. No, yeah, nine inch. Eight, eight inch. inch. Eight inch. Eight. I have the eight inch. This is a like a envelope that came with this awesome like seven by eleven book of pictures that. I remember fondly going through while listening to the record. It also came with a flexi. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, you know, when I thought about what Japanese hardcore record I would want to bring on to, to and listen to before I came on the show, this one just came into my mind because of me having, uh, like Sean had pointed out, me having that memory of like sitting down and the experience and the process of opening it up and looking at the the booklet and 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 taking it all apart and 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 the music i mean i i don't know discharge but with yeah with it's like much they, tightened up like they basically mix, they basically kind of mix discharge and then put that disrupt that disorder chaos uk like noise yeah. over it right plus mixed which with the definitely Japanese helped stuff. which definitely helped my love for it um, yeah but uh you know, it, it brought me, uh, it, it always brings me back to that sitting on the floor, opening everything up and, 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 and having it be a, a an event, uh, listening to music as, a, as a, as a thing to do, as opposed to a kind of just like a, a ancillary uh, part of your day. Um, so that particular, I don't know much there's, about there's the band. lots of like variations of it. And I can't remember them. There's like various different variations with like, a, a boat. I mean, someone else who knows more about this will, could probably tell us. But uh, that band and that scene in general is very interesting because they they're they're not a, a Tokyo band or an Osaka band. They're from uh, Kyushu, which is the southern islands of Japan. And they had their own scene, okay. kind of separate from Tokyo, and a lot of like noise noisy stuff like Confuse and those kind of right. bands and the Swankies and those kind of bands. But uh, I do know that there's only one member of that band I think who's still alive. Wow. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it ever got reissued. I don't know if it ever, there's, how easy it is. There's a couple of like it. CD compilations of all, all the stuff that have been reissued in Japan. And there's, there's also some vinyl bootlegs done in Europe probably. But well, if you're in a that fan format, of, it hasn't been reissued now. If you're a fan of the Discharge sound mixed with a kind of a Japanese twist, uh, I, I recommend it highly. Um, and if you can get the one. original, if you can get this packaging, oh. it becomes an all night event. And you can, <laughs> this seven, six minute, seven inch, it turns into a 25 minute, uh, a 25 minute uh, excursion. So there's an amazing video. It was an official video tape that they put out back in the, in the 80s. It's called Live at Kokura In and Out, which is the name of the club. Go on, okay. go on YouTube and watch that, and you'll see how great that band was. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's on YouTube. Great band. All right, Sean. What'd you go for us? All right. A little embarrassing <laughs> here, but um I, I need to I need to take uh, I need to be accountable for myself here. And and you guys can probably tell me a little bit more about this one. I I just got this one. This was a Christmas gift from my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> This is a great record, you guys. Really? I, I, yeah, this, is, this is a great record. This is a repress on bronze. I don't know. Maybe this is like a, a hundredth repress or something. Anyways, you know, yeah, yeah. Nine, 1979. I think is their first record. This is their first record. No, it's like their second or third. Okay. Album. Yeah. I thought it was. I, anyway, okay, cool. Um, anyways, I mean. What, what, what can I possibly say about this? I, I do appreciate a few things about some bands. For example, the Dead Kennedys. The Dead Kennedys have a unique sound. Can't be reproduced. Same with this band. What makes this band really special, what makes it really special, I think, and I, I spun it several times, was there's, there's no band that sounds like them. I mean, music aside, like the voice and the arrangements, there's, there's no Motorhead part two, part three, part three ripoff, right? How many bands 
ripped off other bands plenty. So we could have a whole show just about that. But I'm listening to this and I'm like, I can't think of any other band that sounds l l just like this. It just isn't. And it's just, it was fascinating for me to finally get a Motorhead record to go through it. I, I do like the production of it. I'll tell you what, I mean, the bass is obviously yeah. there and it's just thumping, it's just thumping, it's thumping. I wish the guitars were more like how Black Sabbath did Sabotage. Oh, yeah, yeah, the guitars yeah. are way out in the front. I think it, I think I would like be more excited about this. Sorry if that's like weird for people, but um, it, it seemed to lack some of that. But I did, I do think that the writing is like for me, it's like the perfect style of like metal and rock writing because there isn't a lot of kind of pretentious lead. It, 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 the leads are all like inside, like right after the chorus, like inside, just boom, boom, yeah. boom, lead, come back out, lead, 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 go back out. It's like, it's the right temperament for me. It's like sure. that Chuck Berry rock and roll style. Like, yeah, yeah. Lead guitar yeah. Playing. I loved it. It's great. It's a great record. You're absolutely correct. Like at the time, there was no, there were no bands that sounded like, I mean, there was Tank, who uh, a, a little bit similar. But Lemmy's but, uh, vocals? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, nothing like Next that. Next level. No. Yeah. Henry, is, Henry in the chat. Henry in the chat said, "Try the Unruled from Canada." Yeah, they have one seven inch. They're a punk band from the eighties who were doing like a no. I remember them. Yeah, Motorhead thing, the, and then the course, chain. It's like a chain with yes, like, yeah. yeah. It's pretty okay. decent. It's good. It's a good record. Yeah. It's like punks doing Motorhead, and then. This is absolutely uncanny. I cannot believe this is actually happening because this leads straight into like my next topic. We, and we didn't plan this, right? So, but the, the other day, yeah. So the other day we were talking about this about like Motorhead and like um, these days there are a lot of bands that are doing that Motorhead sound, like contemporary bands. There's Warhawk from Sweden who just put a record out on a. Uh, Charlie from Anti Simex's label, and then there's a band called Asomvel from the UK who also sound exactly like Motorhead. There's a whole bunch of bands, and White Spade, which is basically that band Midnight under a different name. They're all doing that now, like that that overkill, like Motorhead sound. And like opinions were divided, so so people are like, well, we're never going to get like a new Motorhead album, so these bands are kind of filling that void. Because we're you know we're not going to get any new Motorhead. So on the other hand, it's like well, if I want to listen to a band that sounds like Motorhead, I'm going to listen to Overkill, right? Not this new band that's like doing that, right? So I'm kind of divided. I, I you know I I'm kind of happy to get these like Motorhead kind of bands coming up. But it got me thinking about bands like from maybe like the mid '80s that were kind of doing like Motorheadish stuff. And this this one is one of my favorites. It's this German band called Backwater. And they, had this so record, cool. they had this record called Revelation, and it's like Motorhead, like mixed with Venom, and they were metal guys, but it's it's more like a, a hardcore punk record almost. It kind of sounds like it. that band Warfare from the, the UK, but like better than that though. So yeah, it's, and it's got so a little bit of like that Japanese hardcore sound in there as well, but they're just a German <laughs> band from the mid eighties, you know, me, <laughs> metal well, guys. Metal guys that look like that. It, it looks like a Celtic Frost record. <laughs> it what good. label is that? It's on a label called Disaster. I think it's a totally like DIY <laughs> record label. Awesome. They put one more album out after this. This is an kind of an unhinged record. It's like Motorhead meets Venom meets like a little bit of 80s Japanese hardcore. It's all over the place. It's really raw production. It's kind of a classic. So is it hard to that, find? What's that? Is it hard to find? I, I don't know. I mean, this wasn't expensive, but I haven't checked recently, you know, like, so I, I don't know. Could be one of those Discogs holes where it's like, you know. Maybe. It will be now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great record. Cool. Too Much Alcohol, Dirty Pigs, Witch Chaser, The Black Knight and the Holy Sword. But yeah. Venom, Venom and Motorhead mixed together. In, awesome. in Germany in 1985 or whatever. Yeah. Blackwater. Back, backwater. 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 Yeah. 
大がアンドゥー、oh, okay. <laughs> what's in the... Well, first, you know? before, I, before I get to this record, I got I to gotta pull a Sean and rip the shrink off it. You know? There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Forget that stuff. Who needs that? Forget but, that uh, stuff. I'm going to go, I'm a Voivod head, so I'm going to go to Canada. Um, cool. So we're going Martyr, Warp Zone. Do you know Martyr? I saw them in Osaka, like just up the road at this Thrush Festival that used to happen no before COVID. Really? Yeah. I never saw them, but yeah. I love Martyr. Uh, Martyr, if... For those that don't know, is a progressive like tech death band from Montreal, and it's Chewy, the guitarist who, who had the hard job of replacing Higgy in、uh, Voivod. He it's his all it's his band with his brother, and、uh, one of the drummers of Gore Guts was in the band too.、Um, so it's got that Gore Guts meets Voivod feel. They, I mean, they were going for that Voivod sound, you、yeah. know. But imagine Voivod more death metal. That's really what Martyr is. And this is their, like, I think is, they have three albums, but this is their best record, I think. Warp、wow. Zone. It's like just start to finish. Beautiful record if you like death metal. And it, but it's not all death metal, right? It's got that. No. You know, you hear that how、um, Chewy plays in, in the newer Voivod records. It's all over these records,、uh, but a little heavier than the Voivod stuff. So if you like what he plays and you want to hear a little more crunch,、mm. this is what you want. And the vocals are, you know, got that Gore Guts type sound, but awesome stuff. Like, interesting. I did not know that Chewy was in that band. So I must have seen him playing in that band, but I didn't even know. Because obviously, this is like before he joined Voivod, right? So yeah. Yeah.、Uh, this came out in 2000, but this reissue、uh, didn't come out in vinyl to 2013. All right. And I ordered all three records direct from him on his website. Wow. Wow. And、um, really good deal, too, because、uh, Canadian dollar was weak at the time. <laughs> But、uh, um, I, I love all three records. They're, 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 their last record, Feeding the Abscess, has a boy by cover of Brain Scan, which is where、mm. I got my、uh, label name from. So、um, I'm a huge boy by head, as you guys know. But.、Wow. Um, Yeah, this is like if you want, like, Voivod as like a death metal band. Like, wow,、well, like I said, I've only seen them live. That but... typical、yeah. 2000s death metal,、uh, <laughs> progressive, like, cynic,、uh, right. okay. like cynic feel、uh, to the record, <laughs> but、um, I think they're better,、uh, in my opinion.、But、wow. Maybe not better drummer, but t h e y better guitar playing for sure. I mean, this guy、wow. is amazing. <laughs> Chewy is, Chewy is, I mean, He's proved that he's like can fill those shoes, you know? No,、oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and Piggy's my favorite guitarist. I never thought anybody could fill those shoes. But, and I was kind of like, I wasn't into it at first. And now I've come around, you know? The last two Voivod records are just sick, you know?、Um, they're amazing, yeah. Yeah. So, there okay, you go. I'm going to check that out for sure.、Definitely. Yeah.、Uh, you can probably find them pretty.、Uh, they're, not, they're not too bad. They're like $20 record, $20, $25 bucks for. I don't know. You probably have to get them shipped to you. I don't know. They might be in Japan. That, they could be. It could be. Could be, could be. But if you see Martyr,、uh, they have three, good, three great albums.、Um, that's their best. Warp Zone is their best one, in my opinion. But、uh, you probably can't go wrong with any of them.、So. Nice. Wow. Chewie's the man. Great guitar player. Yeah. All right, Charles. I wish. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Okay.、Um, I just got these in the mail this in the mail last week.、Um, I don't order very many new records because of economics and all. But、um, <laughs> when I heard about this, uh, uh, the, anybody who knows me knows two of my favorite bands are the Big Boys and the Minutemen.、Um, awesome. I was lucky enough to have、uh, Tim and Beth Kerr stay at my house a couple months ago.、Uh, he had an art show here in Queens, Tim, and he had played me. Uh, this song for a record that was coming out. And、uh, he's now doing a band of kind of old time music with a, with a friend of his,、uh, where it's basically just guitar and banjo and kind of old time instruments called Up Around the Sun.、Um, he did a split, they did a split with Mike Watt and the Second Missing Men.、Mm. Uh, it's a seven inch、cool. where they're、uh, Up Around the Sun covers History Lesson by the Minutemen. And Mike Watts covering We Got Soul by the Big Boys.、Um, 
both versions are amazing. Um, I'm not usually a huge fan of like two bands doing each other's songs, but they both deconstruct the songs and reconstruct them. Uh, the Up Around the Sun song, I mean, he gets a, a variety of people to do the lines. Uh, he gets Mark Arm. He's got he has John Doe say the line about John Doe. Um, he it, it's just I don't know. I these bands mean so much to me that they can do no wrong. So you may not like it as much as I do, but uh, you know Paul Paul previous guest Paul texted me asking me if I got it, and uh, he said when he heard it it brought a tear to his eye, and I said. Wow exactly the same reaction wow. from me so yeah, before it, you it, held it up before you held it up he said i know i know what this is going to be he said right because yeah. we had we had talked about this yeah it's yeah. it's just came out it's on a label called red parakeet records uh you know i can't recommend it enough if you wow. have the uh uh you know go online i believe they have a band camp site uh but both versions the we got soul version it's congas and all sorts of different instruments nice it's it's just a touching and beautiful tribute to both bands so that's wow. uh, i could you know in in this we we could probably all agree in this one of the things that i find hard to believe about the this kind of music is you know i grew up and you know the big boys and the Minutemen became two of my favorite bands. And, uh, you know, now I'm like having members of those bands stay at my house. I'm putting out records by them. Like, that's just not something that, you know, when I was real young and listening to like mainstream rock and roll, it wasn't even something that was in the orbit of ever being able to happen. Um, but, uh, one of the beautiful things about the music scene that, we're involved in is that it's small enough where we, you know, we, we are all, you know, we're all able to just kind of be uh, one kind of big family. So it's, for, it's true. Sometimes you can kind of lose sight of it a little bit. And I do sometimes, mm -hmm. but just like, just today we were like, we've never met before, but within you know a minute, we'd already connected, you know, with, our, you know, stuff we've done in the nineties and through you know, trading records and, you know, the whole network and, all around the world and stuff like that. It's kind of easy yeah, to lose sight of it sometimes. How, how important that that all is. I, you know, I can't you know. tell you how many how many times I'm like, you know, talking about someone with someone that's not in the music scene, and they they say, "How do you know them again?" And I try to explain it, and they just have this like funny look, like, "How does that yeah. work?" You know, like they were in a band, and now you're putting out. Re I don't even understand that. Well, you know, people, like you're supposed people, to just be a fan. How do you know them? You know. Well, so people ask it's... me, it's like, how do you how do you know all these people that you keep talking to every week? And I said, well, it's just from like this kind of music scene that we've been involved with since the eighties, and you know, I might not have met some of these people, but we kind of know each other in certain right. ways, and it's, that's that's it's in our it's... blood, man. It's yeah. in our blood. <laughs> and so, Charles, that's a very '90s thing to do—cover each other's songs on a split, right? It is. <laughs> but it's, I was going to say, yeah. Jaw, Jawbox, Jawbox, and Tar did yeah. that, right? Yep, and Jawbreaker and Jawbox, I think, did it. Jawbreaker and Jawbox did it, yeah. But the, these guys, both of these bands, do it better. Sorry, that's cool. I'm biased. <laughs> I understand, hundred percent. But uh, you know, it's currently available, so ten right. bucks, I believe, ten bucks, brand new. So go get it. This is a great episode because we're getting a lot of stuff that has not come up before, which I like. I like a lot. So it's cool. Very cool. Okay, Sean, what's your next pick, my friend? All right. So um, for those that know me and we get into these topics, um, I always felt like I was born on the wrong coast. <laughs> I, I was I very much gravitated when, when I first started buying records. I, I really much gravitated to the sound that was coming out of the DC area. Yeah, I, I say that a lot. Um, I was first introduced to the the Discord family through the Flexor Head Comp, and to me, that's like that's a Desert Island record. If I get five records to take, that's one of them. Um, and uh, 
I, I very much love all the bands that are on on that comp, and I could I could probably recite every song, um, etc. You know, it came with a really beautiful poster. I dissected that poster in my head a, a million times. But um, one of the things that was a, a little bit troublesome, obviously, being on the West Coast, was that um, a lot of those bands weren't making it to the West Coast, and this this is true, obviously, for Boston, and obviously true for New York, uh, etc. Um, not making it, so we're, there's just no chance to see them. Um, and unless you had a friend that was trading tapes with you, you didn't get to have any kind of a live experience with the band. And um, as much as I think that the obviously the recording um, elements that a band goes through to, to create a, a record and, and to present it as a, as as what they are, um, the the live performance is more true. And and to me, I I personally believe that uh, when you see a band live, that's really what that's really who the band is. And um, I'm not, uh, there aren't a lot of, I've talked to a lot of people that aren't fans of these things, but I am a fan of these things. And that is um, records that are, have live performance. And so the band that I'm going to present now is The Faith. Oh. And this was live at CB's in December of 81. And it's absolutely sloppy, but it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> from every mock of uh, dropped mic, from every just, the bass just you you could tell the band wasn't tight they were all over the place but it's absolutely brilliant to me personally because to me it fills the gap between listening to the faith records off of discord a million times but not having live tapes and not being able to see live performance because the, the availability wasn't there this fills that gap for me and 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 in my imagination spinning this record like in the in the in the living room here in the dark, you know, I can kind of have my own little moment where I can try and pretend like I actually saw them live. And it means a lot to me. I really think they're, they're phenomenal. It's got um, two different sets. This is on outer battery. They did a great job. I think there's like three or four different colors. This is still a sealed copy. I got an extra copy. I think this one is clear, but it came like on some kind of brown splatter or yellow splatter and uh, clear and blue. Um, and I just love it. I just love it. It's it, uh, completely unpretentious, just live performance. Everything's messed up. I mean, Alex is yelling out, hey, can somebody get me a Coke? It has all the fantastic songs that you'd expect. <laughs> Your ex. Can I get a Coke? Can I get a Coke? Um, and what's cool about it, too, is there's B-side song, B songs on this that didn't make it to a professional recording studio. And one in particular is a song called Outlet. It's uh, the last song on side one. And if you listen to it carefully, and if you're a fan of government issue, especially some of the, the deeper songs that they did, like the sheer terror and uh, the later album sort of kind of noisy, it almost seems like a jam session. This song hits that right on the head. Wow. And then you have to wonder, I mean, I know that the, the GIs were around for a long time, but this, you know, this is an early song that they're performing here. So it could be that some of this wasn't necessarily um, specifically owned uh, exclusively by the GI band is that style. But there was a little, this is an interesting song to me. And I kept playing that over and over again. I go, it's almost like if you brought Stab in, it's a GI song. So that was, that was, I Sean, thought that was kind of cool. Sean, um, I'm going to, I'm going to make this a little louder because Tom Lyle lives about four blocks away from me here. Does he really? Yeah. Tommy yeah, boy. Does. Yeah. Um, very cool. Yeah, I've had some conversations with Tom. He, I he's love. All, all he's, guys. If you follow him on Instagram, he's got. He's always po his his record collection and his his audio setup is, is mind blowing. So yeah, uh, yeah, he yeah, has a very. I think he was telling me he has something like uh, twenty thousand records. I don't know. I and I said he, he said this up like on the third floor of his house, and I said, yep. "Did you have a structural engineer check some of those beams? Because I don't think. I mean, that's the weight of a dump truck." No, it's like he's in the attic space with the dormered ceilings and you know, he's got shelves built and custom built around it and it's there's it's no way crazy. that home was built to have that weight. No, <laughs> I don't think in the in the twenties they were like, Well, let's figure this out. He's forty thousand pounds of records. It's a <laughs> knitting room. I right. know it's not that's cool. That's cool. Yo, know, I've had some conversations with him too. He obviously, is, um, is one of my favorite uh, guitar players. Yeah. And uh, when we yeah. saw them, I saw GI for the first time at this club called the Cornhusker in '85, and um, they were playing with Uniform Choice. It's the actual show where um, "Screaming for Change" is painted on. It was that show, 
Wow. Um, it, they were so phenomenal. They're so phenomenal that night. I couldn't believe it. And he had that. It was. I think that was Tom's moment where he had a modified 100 watt Marshall head, and it was really coming at you, and mm. it was is perfection. I he came on this show about not this show, but my channel about two years ago, and we we talked for about an hour and a half about all this stuff. He showed a bunch of his records, and we talked about his modified amps and his guitar sound, and like yeah. I, don't, I like okay, those like two final government issue records at you and crash like i love both those records so much and like he just he just post posted today he just yeah. posted today they just, they're just being, re they're being reissued right being reissued, yeah but i oh and and to I, mm. I know that this has been talked on the show before to settle the debate between who's better on the void or faith side <laughs> who gives a shit yeah they're both <laughs> awesome yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. the answer yeah. it's not a contest it's just a record right Imagine so, if Faith got that live sound that Sean's talking about. I think Faith would be talked about more because they, they didn't capture that energy, I think, for that live set on mm -hmm. on recording. That Void had Void yeah. captured that live energy it sounded like, you know, for right. to me. You know, yeah, yeah. I, love the Faith, I love the Faith side. Um, so I know yeah. everybody's always bagging. It's okay them. to like them both. Yes, they're, not, they're different. Well, bands. Like, <laughs> they, they could have been different records. They just it's so to, funny that, 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 that it's still yeah. going on to this day, to this day. Yeah, it still is. <laughs> it's it's been going on for thirty years. I've heard forty years. It's never gonna it's stop. It is. Yeah. It will never end stop. it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Full stop. Yeah. All right. So Charles showed a compilation album. I've got one too. It's not oi though. It's metal. I was thinking, like, I have a lot of compilation albums, and I, I recognize the importance of a lot of them, you know, regional compilations, like, through the years, and it's a good way to find out about new bands. But I think I, I, I don't play my compilation records as much as I should. And, and I don't know why, because I've got some really great ones from, from punk and hardcore and psychedelic and, and sky, all, all sorts of music. But anyway, so I... Made it. I'm making a conscious effort, conscious effort to try and listen to my compilations a bit more. So, but this is one I got recently. It's kind of interesting. You can tell it's obviously a heavy metal, heavy metal compilation. But this one is notable because it's the first ever appearance on vinyl from uh, Merciful Fate. Wow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So this came out. It's on Ebony Records, which is a British label that put out new wave British heavy metal. Right. So. I guess this record came about because bands sent in their demo tapes and then they just put out you no know, tracks from those demos on this record. But like Merciful Fate is the first band, Black Funeral, it's a different version, like a demo version, I guess. But this is like 1982, something like that, 1981. But there's <laughs> there's only three bands on this that like put out anything else afterwards. The only way you can hear most of these bands is like on this on this compilation but that's great yeah i mean, i just i love i love the cover just like the black and the red color scheme looks looks oh, really cool, cool. But like is it is it like um international or is it just that's a good question yeah so like it's got merciful fate from denmark <laughs> and then it's got a band called wells wells fargo from <laughs> holland <laughs> wow. and then all the other bands are from england okay uh tantrum scimitar Tarot Sutra, Mean Machine, Confessor, Jury, Mercenary, Wicked Vicar, Pentapus, Detroit, and Moby Dick. Uh, so all these like Pen really Pentapus. Yeah. Pentapus Rin's best name. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I got Scimitar. <laughs> no, Pentapus. <laughs> but it's so it's so cool. All these bands only ever put out one demo tape. So cool, one man. song on this record and then that that was it gone and all the bands are really good they're all great yeah did you have that record from back in the day or did you get it no like... i bought this about a month and a half ago in here in Osaka. because oh, cool. i i like ebony records they're like they put out like yeah. kind of like really low budget heavy metal records from the early 80s but good ones. I, I just like that whole aesthetic just cheap sounding and underground <laughs> underground diy heavy metal records you know there you go yeah so metallic storm 
first ever vinyl appearance from Merciful Fate on this record. That's sick. There you go. I, I have all the Merciful Fate records, but not that one. I don't have the co- any comps that they're It's on, funny. But... This is actually the second in the series. There's a, this is like volume two. There's another one called uh, Metal Maniacs, spelled A-X-E. That's the first, that's the first volume. This is, this is volume two. So, there you go. There you go. So, all right. I'm, I'm going to that out. For sure. <laughs> try, try, and, try and get it. Try and look for it. See if you can. Yeah. I think I saw an ad for that record on Headbangers Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is too obscure for. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I think so. It's like, Way down. I mean, Wicked Vicar were not on MTV. I'm no, pretty no, sure. No. <laughs> uh, all right, it's the last round, right? Last round. Yeah. Last round. It is. Time flies. Time flies. Oh, I wanted to say my favorite track on that record was uh, "USA Lights" by Detroit. That's a real like hard hitting tank motorhead style track. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Andrew, what's your I'm going to uh your 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 mother country uh from UK. Um I, you from know what when he said that I almost thought Japan. That's how I lived. <laughs> <laughs> we know you where you're really from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you missed the Japan, but not uh you know, <laughs> you know the roots. Uh, one of the best bands from Birmingham, England, that's not Black Sabbath, of course. Or Napalm Death. <laughs> uh, we're oh, going okay. <laughs> God Flesh, man. Him. Nice. All right. This record, ne- I, it's in constant rotation in my house. Um, it's the, to me, the best God Flesh record that's not Street Cleaner. Mm-hmm. Okay. And one of the things that really appeals to me about this record is, well, first of all, the riffs are insane. Um, and Justin's playing is otherworldly on this record. But it's got a live drummer. <laughs> it's got That's none right. other than Ted Parsons from Prong. Prong. Yeah. A band I grew up watching live. I used to go see Prong all the time at CBGB's and around, uh, you know, the Ritz, all those places in New York City. And the thing that stood out about Prong was not only, you know, Tommy Victor playing guitar and the, the vocals and stuff, but Ted Parsons is just a monster drummer. That's right. And if you read the liner notes of this record... Uh, Justin Broderick hate, hated this record when it when it first came out. Really, like the production of it, and yeah, he, he tells a whole story about it inside here. And and the, it's funny the the picture of them in the record is like he looks really like pissed. <laughs> He's like, I hate this record. Yeah, <laughs> but it's cool to see a three piece of God Flesh instead of two, right? right. Instead of uh, two guys. Right? But um, you know. The thing that he loved about it was like there's only one guy who could have played drums on a Godflesh record. It's, it's Ted Parsons from Prong and the Swans, right? So that's that's the the sell for this record. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like their last record before like they came back, right? It was Mike. Yeah. I think it was like the, the goodbye before he went to uh, Jesu, Yesu, or whatever. Yes, and, I think you know, so. Yeah. Before they made a comeback, right? With yeah. the World Lit by Fire, I think was their comeback record. I think. Yes, um, that, that's right. Yeah. They made an amazing comeback. But um, this record to me is just like my, one of my favorite Godflesh records. Uh, I do love the record before this too, um, Us and Them, but never came out on vinyl. I guess we got to do the earache on demand thing to get that one, right? <laughs> yeah. <Fuck> that. <laughs> I'll wait until uh, I find it somewhere. Uh, get the Buck the Fairy record too. But, uh, <laughs> get like a, a free Buck, Buck Fairy download. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck that. There's a lot of like the <laughs> record before a lot of break beats and stuff, which is like weird for God Watch, but it worked. I don't yes, know. It was really absolutely. cool. The riffs, his riffs are like so putrid on that record too. It's like, and this record too, like he really, and just the vocals, lyric, everything about this record I love. Um, but uh, yeah, this I think this is like the original pressing on the end uh, on orange. But they they've reissued it on um, what's that music on vinyl? Uh, mm. label. I have that. Recently. I have that same one, the orange on. Yeah, the yeah. This, this is the one. Uh, I'll never never get rid of that one. That's no. that's one of my favorites. But I love God Flesh, and that's one of my. I think that's my second favorite God Flesh record from besides the first one, besides the first album. But. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> well, that's I used to go and 
Okay, so they used to play on a lot of like hardcore bills back in the late 80s. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd never seen them. So until, they would like, play with like the better. stupids or like anyone, you know, because they were just very underground and, and in the hardcore That's scene, cool. really. Yeah. And I did not like them at all back then because really? I was just, you know, into just straightforward hardcore. Right. So, oh, God, God, I should play that. again. Oh, my that, God. Right? Like, yes. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. But it's like Sean was saying, like, years later, I finally you know, opened my mind and realized what an amazing uh, band they yeah. are. When Street Cleaner went, came out, I was like this. Really. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I was just wasn't ready for it. It's like Cathedral, you know, when Cathedral came out. You know, yeah, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for it. No. Now I get exactly. it. <laughs> it. takes time sometimes. But, uh, but, uh, God Flesh is like, I think it's in my top three Birmingham bands, you know, of all time. You know, I'm not a priest guy. I know that's blasphemy, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I've really grown to appreciate. And, you know, people kind of forget about how groovy they are. They have this, I mean, these huge grooves and beats running through. Yeah, crush yeah. my soul. Just the, the 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 time the time signatures on some of their records. It's just like oh. out of this world. The riffs are out of this world. I I, I love the lyrics, vocals. I I love it all. You know, I, I'm I'm a fan, huge fan. And um, prong two, prong two, amazing. Yeah, uh, prong is like. One of those bands, they're still kicking around, man. They just put out a new song the other day. Like, they're still awesome. I mean, just I saw them a couple of years ago in Long Island um, at a club that's now a church, whatever. Closed down during the pandemic, it's now a church. It sucks. But what? Um, they, were, they were amazing. <laughs> they, they played all the hits, you know. Was, they were great. They played shit off uh, Primitive Origins, too. It was awesome. Charles, what, Charles, what a prong, Charles, what prong a, a big influence on Rorschach? Uh, we definitely like them. Uh, mm. I mean, I don't. I didn't play an instrument, so I can't say for sure. But I know that Keith and Nick, the guitar players, were mm. big fans, for sure. I can't. Sure. I, I can't. I can't. I can't imagine we they weren't musically. Um, I love them. Um, I don't necessarily think I sound like the vocalist, but so I wouldn't say that influential. He was influential on what I did, but definitely on the band for sure. Right. I you want to hear that. an interesting fact about Prong is their demo is just primitive origins, right? They remixed it and they added guitar solos to it. And that's that became their demo is actually the album just with guitar solos. Okay. Tommy oh. didn't tell me that. <laughs> I I was oh. And before demo. Why is it like well, what's the difference? He's like, oh yeah, we just had solos and remixed it. Tommy Victor and Ted were also in Damage, right? Was Ted was Damage? not Tommy. Yeah. Not not Tommy. Okay, yeah, Damage was great too. Tommy was a sound man at CBS, man. He, yeah, I, I know. I, yeah, I, I give him tape every now and then, and he'd say yes or no. Like he'd be really matter of fact. He's like, I could do it. Like to if you like, if, it. yeah, yeah. If you like Prong, you should check out Damage too. If you mm -hmm. have Damage. Damage is fucking yeah. incredible. Like. They have a, a, a live, before, man, it's the <laughs> yeah. They have a live off the board CBGB CBs and they have their album, and then they have yeah. that twelve inch. Both are really classic good. album. Yeah, yeah. Sins of Sins of Our Father. Yeah, Sins, Sins of, of Our Father. Fathers. Yes, I have it. Great record. Andrew, did I ever tell Andrew? Did I ever tell you my prong story? No, tell. I was so in love with Prong. I, you know, this was back in the day, right? Where you don't have uh, social media, so I was started to write to Prong, and I was writing to. Um, to um, Mike and um, he agreed to do a pissed happy children prong split. Oh my god! <laughs> and then wow. they signed. Then they when they signed for when they signed uh, with uh, Epic, he said, "Sorry, dude, I can't do it. They won't let oh. me." <laughs> They're still on Spigot, the French label. Yeah, we were good. Yeah, we no. were just gonna do. We were gonna do like a two. We we're gonna do just like a. I don't think it was gonna be a single split. We do like a couple songs, just a seven. Just, just for fun, and he was totally into it. Did you ever hear the Peel Sessions, the Prong Peel Sessions? It's I, got on vinyl. I love that. Oh my God, I have it on vinyl, too. It's, <laughs> weird it's, cover. It's, it's like a kind of garage rock looking record with a cover. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, cause it, threw me off. it threw me off. I the said, CD this? is like a better okay. cover, mm -hmm. but the, the LP is like a weird... It like, threw me off. I was like, hang on, is this yeah, really Prong? Like, it's so stupid, yeah. but yeah. it's fucking incredible. Yeah. It's like one of the best recordings. I mean, yeah. the Peel Session. What do you got? Peel yeah, Sessions, it's, yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Great it's like, it's Force Fed era. Force Fed era from Prong, yeah. Yeah. 
another band that doesn't get enough love, but there you go. Well, he's playing right. with Dan Danzig now. He's been playing with Dan Danzig, yeah. right? Yes, Tommy? but Song is still kicking, man. They're still going. Yeah. So they, they haven't really changed the sound that much, you know. It's just, they're back no, they to that. Play, they play all the heads. They play the heads. Yeah. Wow. They're really you tight. Too. Too. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's just like that precision and it's like icy cold like ice cold steel like precision like mechanical it's not groovy or funky or warm or fuzzy it's very like cold and precise and like yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's like perfect. the new york city subway running mm. through your veins when you're, <laughs> when you're listening in my opinion but all right. nice all right charles what's your last pick so I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go emo on this one, and I don't mean that by a genre of music. I mean that by uh, my emotional connection to this record uh, and the person involved with it. Um, if you're from this area, I know Sean. You said you were born on the wrong coast, but had yep. you been born on this coast and had you been born in New Jersey, you would have been familiar with um, Jack Terrycloth and Peter Ventantonio, who is in a band called Sticks and Stones. And later in a band whose rec uh, records I put out called World, The World Inferno Friendship Society. Uh, he passed away in 2021. Um, I could say easily one of the people in my life that I would consider a peer and a hero. Um, so the, it, after his death, his sister and uh, another member of the band uh, started a foundation uh, to help uh, uh, youth that, uh, and, and, you know, out of, out of sort youth that, and, and people who feel out of place, uh, like himself when he was younger. Um, and they did a Kickstarter and they put out a tribute record to his songs called Endless Possibilities, a tribute to Jack Terrycloth. Um, the fans of the band, they went on to be uh, they, their last few records were on Alternative Tentacles, actually. Oh, um, cool. They had a huge following. That, I, I mean, it, describing their music, I can't even describe their music, but just, the the bands that do do cover songs on this record, uh, uh, Ted Leo, The Bouncing Souls, um, The Slackers, Jeff Rosenstock, Warriors, Worthless United. It's a double album. Uh it's got in, in between songs, it's got uh, snippets of his stage banter. Um, again, more personal than anything else that came in the mail about a week and a half ago, and I've been listening to it. Uh, it's a beautiful tribute. Um, if you haven't heard of the World Inferno Friendship Society, uh, they're one of the bands that will either trigger someone to say, I love them or I hate them. And there's not really many in-betweens. And those are the kind of bands that intrigue me. Um, so, uh, but Sticks and Stones as a band growing up, uh, I mean, there's, you know, outside of New Jersey, probably not too many people know who they are, but uh, they were, they were uh, meant a lot to a lot of people around here. I know Andrew put out a, record, put out a split <laughs> record by them. Yep. I did the vinyl for their first album. Their first couple records were on this label out of Minnesota. Their first record was on a label out of Minnesota called Skeen Records, um, which is a ver which is kind of like and ended up being an offshoot of Twin Tone. Um, yep. But uh, as the fans of the World Inferno Society say, they're called Infernites. Rip Rip Cloth, R I P Jack Terry Cloth. Um, I don't know if you can find this record because it was part of a Kickstarter. But if you can, if there's a way you can download it, I'm sure there is, uh, I would suggest checking it out. Endless Possibilities, the tribute to Jack Terry Claw. Great, Great last pick. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Sean. Thanks. No problem. All right, Sean, what's your last pick? Well, I don't think you guys are going to believe me. You'll notice I haven't moved since we started this. So there's no, this is not sleight of hand. I am not a prestidigitator. I'm not going to be a charlatan on this. Maybe it's the Capo Cola. I was going to say, was it the Capo Cola? Maybe it's the Capo Cola with spiritual <laughs> enhancement. My last record and my favorite record by far of the ones that I showed you. This, this, is, this, this, is, another, this is another Desert Island one. And... Andrew, you mentioned it first, or maybe it was Charles. 
<laughs> wow, nice. Is. Awesome. That's can twice or three times that's happened yep. when we yep. talked about I, I segued, I, I segued your motorhead, and then here we go, bro. <laughs> we didn't talk about this, Mike. I'm telling we you. Did. We didn't no. talk about this. No. No. It has a sticker, too. Oh, that's cool. Mine has a hype sticker also. Rip that off. Just, hype sticker? Hype no, sticker? I can't. It's a part okay. of it. So then that's perfect. Then that's okay. <laughs> Look, I mean, I what, what can you possibly say? I mean, the they had, this has never been repressed. Nope. No. It's never been repressed. In fact, I, I I wish I could talk to some of the guys and see if we could do it. I would I would repress this record. It's so phenomenal. It's so phenomenal. Double guitar, double bass. Um, I love how the, on the songs when they end one song, another song starts right away. Just like Rudy. Didn't they record it live? It's recorded live. I yeah. Think. yeah. Is it recorded yeah. at Stevie's? They recorded what? at Stevie's live. Yeah. 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 Eighty-four. First Year Terror. The first Year Terror record is recorded at Stevie's as well. Wow. Yeah. If if people haven't seen this one or haven't tried this one, I don't know folks that are they're going to tune in. You got to try and at least just check this out on YouTube or something. Next it's level. so phenomenal. It's so phenomenal. Next and and you know this that's a sad, this is like the sad part for me. Like I I I've got flyers. I've got original flyers that I got. I had a um, pen pal in New York at this time, and he was sending me flyers that had damage on it. And I'm and I there's no possible way I could experience it. They never toured. I never saw them. I was a little yeah. before my time, so. Yeah, me too. I didn't start going until 86, 87, so. Yeah. Anyways, I love it. Absolutely it's, fantastic record. There's, you're not in, uh, from people around here, like you said, born on the wrong coast, but people around here, um, they're, they're, that record's revered by a lot of people I know. So oh, good. It's, it's not unknown. It a lot of it's people not are super unknown around here, but uh, it should definitely be well, way more known. Um, On the West Coast, it's 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 absolutely just rare and un, un, ununderstood, completely ununderstood. Right. It used to be pretty cheap to find around the '90s. You could find them for like 20, 10, 20 bucks. Now it's like now three hundred. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try and find that in Japan, and I'll report back. On my findings. You might get a deal in Japan, that, unless they go and buy Discogs prices. You know, I don't know. If somebody, um, if somebody uh, knows these guys, any of the guys that are in the band, uh, I would, I would love to get in touch with them. And I, and someone had a comment in the in the notes about Florida's damage. I remember them too. They're pretty good. They were keyboard oh, driven. One of the dudes think. from uh, Jimmel in the band or something. Yes. Rick, that guy Rick or something. In from damage. where? In. The dude from uh, he used to like do sound at CB's too. Um, he was in damage, wasn't he? It's Sean, not, that looked sealed. Was was there a plastic bag on it? No, <laughs> it dude, looks, this is it's absolutely mint condition. Oh, okay, bravo, because that's tough to find. And that's any sure, I'm gonna look into it, man. I'm gonna see not if I can get sealed. you a contact, man. All right, I'll ask around. Yeah, this is in better condition than I thought. Just a little crease, right? A little little crease right there. Um, <laughs> it's it's just discogs it's okay. BG plus. Huh? Yeah, it, records like that can be in really shitty condition. That's okay because that yeah. means that I tell you what, if I went to a record fair and I and I saw this for a hundred dollars up on the wall, I would buy it, and I wouldn't even I, I'd buy it at a hundred dollars. I don't even care what the condition is on the inside. Right, it'd become a wall hanger. Wow, well, not good. Yeah, I get it. No, I, I agree. It's a great record. Classic. Okay. Uh, it falls upon my shoulders to wrap things up today. And like, <laughs> I think, you know, I'm in Japan. I should in introduce a Japanese band or artist, you know, every now and again. And like, for people who are into like Japanese heavy rock or blues rock from the 70s, this one is a really well known one. It's just the blues creation Demon and Eleven Children. It's kind of popular because it's got a cool title and it's got cool looking artwork and it's 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 a decent record. It's got some Black Sabbath riffs, yeah. not a great vocalist, but anyway, the band's called Blues Creation. I'm not going to talk about this one today. People know this record. This band did another record with one of my favorite Japanese singers of all time. This woman called Carmen Maki. And so she's together with the Blues Creation on this record. And if you look it up, the reviews of it are really lazy. It's like, whoa, it's like Led Zeppelin. You know, it's like um, 
Janis Joplin like singing for Led Zeppelin, which is like a really, really lazy description. Cop out, cop out description. <laughs> yeah, like to me, I don't know if you guys know Ruth Copeland. She's a, a British singer, but she did some records with Eddie Hazel from Parliament. And those records are kind of like heavy rock based, but with some kind of more quieter, like psychedelic moments. And uh, this record is kind of more like that than than uh, Janis, Jop Janis Joplin singing for Led Zeppelin. But it's a great record. She's a great singer. The heavy parts are super heavy. There's some really quiet, more like emotional blues, blues based songs. But this is a, I love Carmen Mackie. She's amazing. One of my favorite singers from japan this is like 1971 this came out not really yeah wow. and because i'm talking about carmen maki i thought i'd cheat a little bit and kind of just show some of her other records because she has a big career that's kind of interesting so just bear with me while i just quickly yeah. hold up some this is like really one of her really old ones like late 60s early 70s this is like more just japanese pop music but do you know that movie Bullet Train? Have you seen that yet? The new it's, one? The new one. It's got Brad Pitt, right? Yeah, I've seen it. They, I, me neither. But like they have one of her songs from this record in that movie. No yeah. And people have got, so it's one of those things where people are, are suddenly, who is this woman? Who, what is this song from this movie? And it's, it's, it's like Kate Bush, right? All over It's again. like that. <laughs> and it hasn't quite blown up yet. That's, that's but you know, she's still around. I follow her on Facebook. She still plays live shows and stuff. So I hope she gets a little bit of money from it. You know, it's one of her old songs from like the late so 60s. Cool. What's, so, yeah. what's the song, you know? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I say it? It's called Toki no Wahaha no Kai Ko no Yoni. It's the name of the oh, song. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at this guy. It's all in Japanese. Everything is. Like yeah. And, but if you, but if you just like look up maybe Carmen Maki and Bullet Train, it'll probably come on. Awesome. But that song's like a really sad, like ballad, in the old like Japanese style, very emotional ballad. But uh, and then there's this one where she looks like a total like a hippie. This is from 1970. And, <laughs> and then she had this other band called Oz, which is all like hard rock and heavy metal. Oh, wow. They did like a bunch of records, Oz. And then not she... the same, not not fire in the brain, Oz. No, but the same spelling. No. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then she did this one with another band called Laugh. It's like Carmen Maki and Laugh, which is like a, a, it's a heavy rock record as well. And then she went total heavy metal. This is a great record. Human Target is the name of the record. It was called Carmen Maki and 5X. Um, this is just a heavy metal record from the 80s. So I just wanted to show some love to Carmen Maki. She's one of my favorite Japanese singers. Nice. There you go. And it's complete coincidence that she just I didn't even know about the bullet train thing until I was like checking it out yesterday. But, so there you go. Japan more stuff to look out for. She's a great singer. I mean Ruth Copeland. Do you guys know Ruth Copeland? Like uh, yeah. it's kind of similar to that. Not Janis Joplin or Grace Slick, as everyone keeps saying. Yeah. That there we have it. <laughs> that's that's awesome. the end of the episode. Awesome show, man. Carmen Carmen Mackey. Good show as always. Lots of, lots of stuff I hadn't heard of before, which is always great, right? Thanks for having us. Yeah, and Thank especially you, yeah. thanks to Sean for coming on at the last minute. A lot of Save. fun. A lot of fun. Save the day. Save the day. We owe you. We owe you one. Anytime. Anytime. Glad <laughs> to be doing again. We got some more records to talk about. All right. <laughs> Um, thanks, Charles. Good to finally talk to you after all these. Yeah, years. thanks for having me on. It was great. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Andrew. Thanks as always for coming on. Always my pleasure, Mike. You're the best, man. Let's do it again sometime. Definitely. All right, glad to. Okay, Bye. I'm going to press the old stop button, say goodbye to all the viewers. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, who's on next week? I forgot. There's nobody here to remind me who's on next week. I'll tell you. <laughs> Oh, Tom from General Speech Distribution is go. coming on. Al, Al from The Pist is coming on again awesome. next week. And I think Jordan At Atkins is coming on again. Uh, he's doing residue records. So he's coming on. Good so, show. Yeah.
So yeah, a lot of hardcore bangers in that one. <laughs> I think I think so. Yeah. All right, until next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay healthy and stay clean. <laughs>